business. You know I'm an honest man. <laughs> At least we had a good business. Because, you know, people were just talking. And when uh, Linus Gitai, you talk about time, that this government is keeping time, it's not us. It's the leader. Let me tell you what happens. The problem of Africa, and for this country, is one of leadership. Once the leader of the nation sets the pace, everybody else is aligned. So if President William Ruto is keeping time, how will his deputy not keep time? How will Moses Kuria not keep time? The president has led by example, and he has told us that in his administration, if you ever hear anybody under him who kept business people waiting for 30 minutes, that is ahead of your job. Because you people are entrepreneurs. You are creators of wealth. If you are here 200 people, and I keep you here for 30 minutes, what is the loss to the economy? And I'm just one person. Why would one person keep 200 people waiting? It is the kind of arrogance, the kind of ineptitude, the kind of lack of discretion in the previous administration that has brought this economy to its knees. And that is why there is a paradigm shift in the management style by giving respect to entrepreneurs, by giving respect to creators of wealth. Because the only way to sort out this country is to support and facilitate you guys to create wealth and create employment opportunities for our young people. So for the next five years, you are the guys who keep us waiting, as we will be here on time. Whatever we agree we meet, we'll be there on time. And it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with Moses Kuria. It is our leader, President William Ruto. He has set the pace. He has said the way he wants anybody under him to work. And now as he just to follow. And I can tell you the problems of this country. Let nobody cheat you. That is a lack of water. It is a corruption. It is poor work ethics. No. The problem of Kenya is one of leadership. Once you get the right guy in office to set the pace and to give a clear outline on how management of this country will be done, 50% of our problems are over. And I want to assure you, in another six months, this economy will start picking. In another six months, you people will be happy that officers of government will be your supporters and facilitators. You will be happy to work with the government. You will be very happy to work with the government. Finally, I want to say thank you very much for calling us here to give us help. This is a very unfamiliar situation for us. Those of us who are hardworking, this thing of begging is, is, is a very painful. It's very painful. And, uh, but the situation, the way it is, we have to look around. But at least I'm happy. I never came to beg you, you looked for me. So at least you dignified me. So I feel much better. Why we have asked Red Cross to come, we want you to give your food and money to Red Cross because they have integrity, they have got a good name, they are transparent. Those of us in government, our name is not very good, but we are going to make it better along the way. So we don't want to touch your money for now. In another one year, you'll give money to me when we prove ourselves that we are good people, we are transparent, we are open. Why we want Red Cross to handle these donations, they'll sit with us in the office, we agree on where. Because there are also some areas that traditionally have always been supported, but there are other areas that are having a serious crisis, but they have not been there in the record. So we'll sit with the Red Cross and agree. Why we want Red Cross to handle your donation is to give the food in a dignified manner. Because even if people are suffering, there is no need to take them through in dignity because you are helping them. And why I love working with the Red Cross is that they, they know the beneficiaries, 
they pack the food in a nice packet of so many kilos for a family, and we hand over that food to a family in a dignified manner. Such that even if people are struggling, we don't make the situation worse by making them go through a harrowing experience of struggling and fighting for their food and you know, scrabbling for it. So we'll be sitting down with Red Cross to agree on the areas we want to target and we'll work with our government officials and other leaders to go there and flag off the food donations and give it a bit of publicity and talk about two people because you know sometimes people do good things. It is very necessary that Kenyans know who have done a good thing. It's good. We must give you credit to what you have done. So we will not just give the food quietly. We will say what our manufacturers have done. But going ahead, we can't do this again. In another five years, let's have enough food for everybody. Let's dignify the Kenyan people. Finally, foreign policy, we are having a paradigm shift. We are having a paradigm shift. We are saying that our focus to turn around this economy is increased productivity in all sectors, manufacturing, agriculture, all. Increased productivity must go in tandem with enhanced market. Because if you produce more and there's no market, it's an exercise in futility. The ambassadors and high commissioners we are going to appoint across the globe, we have a new job for them. 70% of their job will be to look for new markets and enlarge existing markets. And we are going to sign all of them a contract, an MOU for two years, with the figures. How many tons of coffee you gonna sell to America? How much tea are you gonna sell to Pakistan? How many tons of mirror will you take to Somalia? And if they don't, they just come back home and hustle with us around here. <laughs>